Concerns over women's rights, this, this in Afghanistan after the Taliban took over the country, the terrorist organization, they vowed the group would respect women's rights and allow them to work and study based on the Islamic law there. But the declaration is sparking a lot of skepticism. Yeah, no doubt. Joining us to discuss, Peter King, former New York congressman and former chair of the House Committee on Homeland Security. Also, Rebecca Walzer is here with us as well, tax attorney, president of the Walzer Wealth Management, <clears throat> and Michael Rydell, New York Post columnist. Uh, great to see everyone here today. Peter King, I'll, I'll go to you first. Uh, talk to me about the Taliban, the promises that they make, and whether or not you believe them. Well, first of all, we shouldn't believe anything the Taliban tells us. They are a notorious terrorist group. They are uh, misogynist. They are, again, these are the worst of the worst. Having said that, even if we uh, took uh, verbatim what they said yesterday, they, they said they would recognize women's rights within the scope of Islamic law. Well, their interpretation of Islamic law basically is the women have no rights. I mean, just look at the way it was before you know, the United States became involved over there. Uh, women had literally no rights. And, and now we have instances and examples of women being dragged from their homes, women being attacked, women, uh, young women being turned over to be used by uh, the Taliban soldiers. So, no, this is uh, anyone who relies on the Taliban at all, look at their record. And again, even if you believe their words literally, within Islamist law, their interpretation of Islamist law is that women have no rights. Yeah, and to your point, one um, post, uh, headline rather, in the New York Post goes to this. It was reported that Taliban fighters shot and killed a woman for not wearing a burqa in Afghanistan. Um, and I'll go to Michael Rydell on this. So we continue to see uh, photos. We hear one thing from the Taliban giving a, their first press briefing, if you will. Uh, and then you see photos and videos, very graphic, by the way, of the things we're seeing. And it's, it's unreal to, to know the things we, we may not be seeing over there, Michael. And terrible also. Um, have you noticed that they've tarred people that they don't like? They put pitch black hot tar on their faces and put a noose around them. That is what these people are capable of doing. And for the life of me, and Peter, you know, you know, Joe Biden, I don't know him at all. Why would he make that decision to pull out so abruptly, to abandon our allies, to abandon Americans who are still hiding in Kabul? I, for the life of me, I can't understand it. And I think this is Joe Biden's J Jimmy Carter moment. And I think this is what is going to destroy his presidency. He could have, his advisors told him, pull out gradually. Donald Trump had a plan in place to pull out gradually over time and tell the Taliban, you know, if you screw around with this, we can annihilate you. But Biden just pulled out like this. This is a humanitarian crisis and Biden has caused it and he has to own it at some point, Peter. And will we continue to see reports of chaos surrounding the Kabul airport of Afghan people desperately trying to get onto those flights? Uh, some of them uh, who had worked as translators for the United States, also SIV. Um, our friends, and our allies. Our allies, absolutely. Uh, you think of, of course, you mentioned the American citizens also, perhaps 10,000 of them still in Afghanistan trying to get to Kabul, uh, women and children. Uh, Rebecca, this is a major challenge, uh, at least quite frankly, in the moment for American forces to get these individuals out of the country. Yes, and I agree with both Peter and Michael. You know, the, the problem here is it really doesn't matter what the Taliban say with their mouth. We all know that Sharia law is based on the Quran, and there are very, I could explicitly give you the verses where women are absolutely disparaged uh, in relation to men with less rights, less property rights, less divorce rights, less sexual rights. I mean, they don't have the right to their own body. Women legally can be raped and, and then killed for being raped under Sharia law. I hate to be so crass and blunt, but this is the law of the Sharia. And this is why it's causing problems throughout the world where it's introduced as a sort of another law uh, available to people besides just their home law. Uh, we see this in the UK and other places. So this is a very problematic law for women because the law itself does not respect. Now, the Taliban might try to be getting uh, international grace here and saying we're going to respect women, but we all know what the law itself entitles men to do to women. And the example of the burqa not being worn on the same day that they released that they were going to treat women fairly is the perfect example of what we're talking about. I mean, this is 
uh, international humanitarian crisis. And I agree, the argument is not around whether we wanted to stay. That's what uh, this administration is trying to pin it around. Everyone really knew that a 20 year war that accomplished little to nothing needed to end, but certainly not abruptly. And we have intelligence officials coming out and saying that they told this administration multiple times in multiple ways they needed to do it in a phased and methodical fashion, not in the way that it was done. Right. And the, the heart wrenching, gut-wrenching images of people willing to risk their life, yeah. jumping and holding onto a wheel of a plane, dying to their death, should tell you how desperate these people are. Yeah, it's graphic. A small, a small sign, too. Uh, Michael, we're going to continue this conversation on the other side of the break. So panelists, please stick around. Still more coming up.